days is officer the watch. Somebody separate on the helm. We normally have somebody up here as well. But, uh, there's always some little sailing boat that zips in from some point that you don't really expect. And it's helpful to have an expert, expert pair of eyes up there. Um, operationally, then we will get somebody on each of the machine guns and uh, somebody up here for, for doing the signaling. You can either by light or by flag. Amsterdam just before VE Day, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we go up in a moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, this, is, this is the chart room, so it's the sort of navigational heart of the, the vessel. We've got the chart table here and instruments around the place. And uh, over in the corner here, that's the uh, display for the ASDIC, uh, that's the device for submarine detecting. So that's uh, that's putting a pulse of sound in the water and listening for an echo back again. Watch over the side so the instruction will go back on the depth setting and then the moment to release. Um, no, nothing like flexible couplings, it's just <laughs> solid right the way through to the propeller. Yeah. Engines themselves, they're um, eight cylinder, three litres a cylinder. So if you think of that sort of car engine, that's a car engine in one cylinder. Mm. In two stroke or four? Four. They intended that for submarine chasing. One of the ways they achieved, achieved it is that the, the keel stops about 15 feet forward of the stern. And so it, you'd expect the keel to go all the way. It's cut away well before the propellers. And uh, the combination of, of that it means that she'll turn quite rapidly. Uh, in fact, the turning circle is 110 feet, which for a 72 foot vessel is pretty good. And one of the reasons we know we haven't got mink is because I don't know if you can see it, but we've got water vault poo on the corners. I'll, I'll show you when you come through. So, oh, yeah. um, inside there is clay, and underneath that clay is the pillory um, oasis. So it's soaking up the water and keeping the clay nice and moist. So we have got a token amount of pine still left here. We manage it uh, with the volunteer help. We just love to find these things. These were all part and parcel of the Second World War. If you look on that map, when we go back, that's why I said it'd probably be better if you look at the map after we've been in here. The thing that Not in the wild grounds, we haven't got They were behind the fence here as you walk along. You know, between oh, where the electric station is. Yeah. Going back. Through, now we'll see a bit of make believe this week. We're going, through, we're going to go through the 17th century village <laughs> on the way out. <laughs> This place became available to us all over our station system. That moved up to Dadius. The Lord Mayor Matt at the time says, see a good idea routine. What a good idea, let's set up our own dedicated green engineer training establishment. 
Well, Provincial Society is part of the Heritage Weekend. We're pleased to bring some buses here that represent times through the history of the bus company, local bus company. The one I'm standing by is uh, 1972, Bristol RE, and this is the driver and the owner, Terry Lawson. <laughs> There's a link there. Um, a few months. pump house and it used to be used for pumping water which I believe fed the breweries and the rum store complex here on Royal Clarence Yard which fed and clothed the Navy for more than 200 years. Uh, right now it is a cafe, we have a cafe bistro here um, and we serve lots of lovely 
homemade food, we've brought baking back to Royal Clarence Yard. Back in the day they made 10,000 ships biscuits a day in the ovens in the, uh, in the bakery. Now we make a couple of loaves to serve with our homemade soup.